the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, Diana, come in, come in. Jimmy, I know you've been busy, but that Mrs. Morton is still waiting. Mrs. Morton? Mm -hmm. Oh, the lady with the baby. Yes, I told her your schedule was full, but she insisted. Mm. Well, I guess I'd better go see her then. Can't imagine why she wouldn't settle for one of the pediatricians. Has the baby been a patient here before? No, I've checked the record. I was just going off duty, Jimmy, but if you need me... Oh, I'll... no, no, thanks, dear. If it was anything serious, you wouldn't have waited this long. All right, Jimmy. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, Mrs. Morton? Dr. Kildare, the, the nurse said that you were terribly busy, but but I just had to oh, see you. I, I'm sorry whoa, to bother you, Dr. Whoa, whoa, Kildare. Oh, now, take it easy. What? I'm sorry. You you don't remember me, do you? Remember you? Well, you, you look vaguely familiar, but I... Well, I... I, I wasn't Mrs. Morton the last time you saw me. Oh. Do you remember Kathy Winslow? Kathy Winslow? Well, of course I remember, but... Well, you were only a little girl, and now you've got a baby of your own. I'm 19 now, Doctor. Oh, that's pretty old, isn't it? You say it like it was 90. <laughs> well, how are your folks? They're gone, Doctor. An automobile accident three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know, Kathy. Well, uh, did you come to see me about uh, about the little fellow sleeping in the blanket there? It is a boy, isn't it? Yes. He He's only a month old. Mm -hmm. mm. He looks healthy enough. What seems to be wrong with him? Dr. Kildare, I, I want... I want you to... Uh, Kathy, uh, what's the matter? What, Kathy, I don't know. Uh, get hold of yourself. I'm sorry. Dr. Kildare, could you... Could you find a home for him? You mean you want to give your child out for adoption? Yes. I see. Hmm. Uh, how does your husband feel about this? Oh, Dr. Kildare, I... Kathy, now I've known you since you were a baby. Why, your mother used to pay me a nickel to push your carriage when I got home from school. There isn't anything you can't tell me. Oh, my husband... My husband doesn't even know about the baby. Oh, I see. Kathy, do you know what adoption means? Yes. You know, once you give him up, I'll be bound never to tell who has him, and you'll never see him again. Is that what you want, Kathy? Yes. Yes. That's what I want. <laughs> ah, look at him, Jimmy. Little rascal's trying to raise his head. <laughs> What kind of a woman can his mother be to want to walk out on him? Well, Dr. Gillespie, she's only 19. A little more than a child herself. Nah, if she's old enough to have a baby, she's old enough to keep it and take care of it. Is she married? 
She uh, says her name is Mrs. Morton. Uh, do you believe her? I don't know. She was a sweet child, though. Came from a wonderful family. Well, that isn't always a guarantee against trouble, Jimmy. I know. What time do you expect her to get here? She's due any minute. Told her to come back this morning at about 11. Diana will let us know when she arrives. Uh, mm. uh, when you see her, please try to be kind, would you? Jimmy, you can't be kind to everybody. This baby could use a little kindness, too. I know. I only meant... That. I know what you meant, Jimmy. I know. We're doctors. Other people in the world may throw stones, but we're supposed to stand by and heal the bruises. If we can. Something tells me Kathy's bruises go very deep. Then you haven't changed your mind, Kathy. No. Is it because you're afraid you can't support the baby? No. If that's it, Kathy, we can help you get a job. Find a day nursery to take care of the child while you're working. And then after work, he'd be yours. You wouldn't have to face years of lying awake at night, wondering where he is and how he's growing up. I can't do it. I'd be no good to him. He'd grow up hating me. Kathy, there's nothing more valuable to a child than his mother. You must know that. But, but I don't know anything about babies. I do things all wrong, and, and lots of times he cries. He cries? Uh, what do you expect him to do, laugh? He's a stranger facing a strange world, and he has to learn how things are, just as you have to learn how to take care of him. You know, Kathy, being a mother isn't accomplished by giving birth. That's only the beginning. The baby will give you a chance, Kathy. Why not do the same for him? Oh, but I am giving him a chance. I, I want him to be somebody. Somebody strong and worthwhile. You seem to be under the impression that young babies crawl out into the world and succeed by themselves. Oh, but I'm not leaving him by himself. I'm asking you to find somebody to take care of him. Somebody. Somebody who's better than I am. Who are you trying to make things better for? Him or yourself? Oh, please. Please don't say anything else to me. If you won't help me, I'll, I'll take him to some other place where they will. I only came here because Dr. Kildare... Because... I... Because we've known each other a long time? Well, I was hoping you'd give that more thought. Kathy, remember the little girl you were? The tiny thing I pushed around in the baby carriage? You know, your mother wouldn't have given you up for the world. Or the sun or the stars. <laughs> if she were living, I wonder how she'd feel... knowing that you were giving your child, her grandchild... into the hands of strangers. Oh, please. Please. All right, Kathy. The adoption will be arranged. Parker! Parker! Did you call me, Dr. Gillespie? Did I call you, Parker? Why, no. Where did you ever get the idea I called you? Where is that confidential file I asked you to get? I gave it to Dr. Kildare like you told me. Well, then, why didn't you say so? Oh, I guess the cat got my tongue. Yeah. Or maybe you were just shouting so loud you didn't hear me. Parker, I do not shout. You do, too. Blah. I should know better than try to argue with an old battle axe. Old? Now, let me tell you something, Dr. Gillespie. You... You're not exactly a rover boy yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to get I'll be in the next room. Just fire a cannon and I'll hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Gillespie, what were you sticking your tongue out for? Huh? Oh, 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 yeah. But I, but I was just going to see your letter. Oh? Uh -huh. Slipped out of my hands. Must have gone under the desk. Oh, I'll help you find no, it. No, no, no. It can wait. Yeah, I'll get it later. Have you looked through that file? Oh, yes, yes. Some pretty wonderful couples who haven't been blessed with children of their own. Jimmy, I know a hundred who'd be happy to take that Morton baby and love it and cherish it for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Dr. Gillespie. I hate to be responsible for a decision of this kind. You don't think I enjoy it, do you? Mm -hmm. You know, Kathy wants that baby herself. No matter how she acts or what she says, she still wants him. I think so, too, Jimmy. 
But what can we do if she won't keep him? There must be a reason for it. A uh, girl has a guilt complex, feeling of inferiority. Uh, but why? Jimmy, she calls herself Mrs. Morton. But we've no proof that there is a Mr. Morton. No, that's right. Well, I'm going to try to find him. I'm going to check the other hospitals, locate the baby's birth certificate, and see if I can't establish the father's full name. Well, suppose you don't find anything. Well, then I thought perhaps we might let Kathy meet the couple who come to adopt the child. Once she knew he was going, her instinct might make her grab onto him. Oh, that's not very fair, Jimmy. Not fair to the couple who want the child. No. No, it isn't. Now, we can't do that. But... It might work if we got a couple to pretend they were thinking of adoption. That's an idea. <laughs> Especially if we get a couple she wouldn't want the child to be with. Jimmy, I know just the thing. Who? You leave it to me. You, you just get going and check on that birth. Uh, all right. I'm on my way. <laughs> Parker! Oh, Parker! Yes, Hey, hey. Sit down, Parker. Sit down. Well, what are you looking at me like that for? Parker, I have wonderful news for you. Parker, you are about to become a mother. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Now we continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare... And Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Are you crazy, Dr. Gillespie? I couldn't adopt a little baby. I'm only asking you to pretend you want to adopt him, Parker. Well, that shouldn't be so hard for you. After all, you walk around here in a uniform pretending to work. Well, I never... The as baby's matter... mother has never seen you. Now, do you want to help... Or do you want to see that child separated from its natural mother? Well, am I supposed to be adopting this baby all by myself? No, Parker, no. I, I got a make-believe husband all picked out for you. Who? I sent Diana for him. He'll be here in a minute. As a matter of fact, I think I hear him coming right... Hey, did you want to see me, Dr. Gillespie? Him? Now, you listen to me, Dr. Gillespie. Quiet, I'm... Parker, quiet. What's all this about him? Who's him? Dr. Carew, him is you. <laughs> Sit down, Daddy. I remember the name of Morton, Dr. Kildare. I'm sure the baby was born here. Mm, it must have been last month. Mm, then it'll be in this record book. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Morton, a boy born to Mrs. Kathy Morton on the 14th. Mm, that's the one. May I see that? Oh, of course, Doctor. Help yourself. Mm. Father, Sergeant Walter Morton. Don't you have an address on him? No, apparently Mrs. Morton didn't give an address. Mm. Sergeant. Might be a policeman, Dr. Kildare. Yes. Or a member of the armed forces. Well, I'll find out. Thanks very much. You're welcome, Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, this is preposterous. Absolutely preposterous. It's also absolutely necessary. Now, let's go over it again. Where are you from? Australia. And what do you do in Australia, Dr. Or, or rather, Mr. Carew? We raise kangaroos. Sheep. You raise sheep. All right, Dr. Gillespie. Sheep. Now, why do you want to adopt a little boy? So we'll have somebody to take care of the sheep ah. without having to pay wages. Ah. Dr. Gillespie, that young woman will think I am a monster. That's exactly what we want of this 
Hello? Dr. Gillespie? Oh, Jimmy, yeah, yeah. What'd you find out? Uh, Kathy has a husband, all right. His name is Sergeant Walter Morton. And you've been able to locate him? Yes, yes, but what fixed me? Well, get out there and bring him back with you. I just stopped a call on the way. Uh, how's your plan working? <laughs> Jimmy, I have the greatest pair of prospective foster parents you ever looked eyes on. Who? Parker and Carew. Oh, no! <laughs> Jimmy, by the time you get Kathy's husband back here, she'll be softened up completely. I don't think a female ape would hand her child over to Parker and Carew. <laughs> Well, keep the wheels turning, Dr. G. I'm off for Fort Bixby. That's Sergeant Morton coming in with his squad now. What sort of a man is he, Captain? There isn't a better or tougher top sergeant in the Marine Corps. Squad! Stand our attention till you decide which foot is your left. Sergeant Morton. Yes, sir. At ease, Sergeant. This is Dr. Kildare. I'm giving you a three-day pass so you can leave the post with the doctor. Yes, sir. Take over, Dr. Kildare. Doc, what's this all about? Where am I supposed to go with you? To see your wife, Kathy, if you'd like. Kathy? Where is she? Is she all right, Doc? I've been looking all over for her for months. She's all right, Sergeant. Yeah, by the way, when did you see her last? Not since she walked out of me months ago. Look, you got to take me to her. I've been half crazy worrying about her. All right, Walter, I'll take you to her. But uh, she's changed. What do you mean, changed? You said she was all right. She is, but uh, there's another man in her life now. A pretty handsome young fellow. Another man? Who is he? Where is he? Leave me to him. I'll punch him right in the nose. Oh, I don't think you will. He's pretty strong. Strong? I'll show him who's strong. Just wait till I get my hands on him. Just wait until he gets his hands on you. Still going to punch him in the nose? See, Doc, he is strong, isn't he? Mm. Look at the grip he's got on my finger. Got a pretty good grip on your heart, too, hasn't he? But why didn't Kathy tell me? Why did she run away? I'm afraid only you can answer that. Uh, did you have any sort of an argument or anything before she left? Well, there wasn't an argument exactly. I, I was home from the post. She cooked a big dinner. But it was kind of burnt. I see. Well, then what happened? Well... Kathy's dinners were always kind of burnt. I guess I said something about it. Mm. Oh, what did you say, Walter? I said she ought to get on the ball with her cooking and housekeeping. Mm -hmm. And then I said it was a good thing we didn't have a kid because she'd never learn how to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that was real bright, Walter. Uh, tell me, was there something uh, special about that dinner? You said it was big. Well, yeah. She'd bake the cake, even. Mm -hmm. But, Doc, it was an awful cake, honest. And I don't care how awful it was. That dinner must have meant something to her, because I've got a hunch that was the day she found out she was going to have the baby. And she was making that dinner so she could tell you and celebrate. Oh, Doc, holy smokes. Oh, what a dope I am. You can say that again. You married an 18-year-old girl who adored you and looked up to you, and then you treated her like a boot camp recruit. But, Doc, I love Kathy. I was just trying to tell her... Yes, that... only you were telling her like a top sergeant, not a husband. You had her so frightened she couldn't do anything right. Pick up your son and come with me. Well, Doc, you're going to fix it so I can talk to her. Yes? And you'd better do some thinking about how you should talk to a young bride. You know, she can learn to do anything any other young wife and mother can do. If you give her a chance. So you don't want those people to have your baby, then? Why, no. No, they were terrible people. Well, you've got to give them to somebody if you won't take care of them yourself. I've told you a hundred times I can't take care what? of it. I don't know how to do anything. Mm -hmm. I can't cook. I, I can't keep house. I can't even make a, make a bed right. Who said so? You were 16 years old when you lost your parents. What did you do up till then? 
I went to school. And after that, you went to work, didn't you? Yes. Uh, so you never kept a home until you were married, did you? No. Did you expect to learn all the things a woman does in a lifetime in the course of a few short months? I don't know. I... Well, Kathy. Dr. Gillespie. You mean, mm-hmm. Mrs. Morton didn't like the uh, uh, foster parents I found for her baby. Oh? Oh, that's too bad. Well, they they wouldn't love him and take care of him the way they should. Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, come here, man, please, man. Uh, did you find the husband? Ah, uh, yes, he's waiting in the next room with the baby, but we can't let her know that yet. No, 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 no. She's got to be willing to take the boy on her own, with or without her. I think she will. <laughs> Kathy, uh, Kathy, I found somebody else to take your baby. Someone who's certain to love him and be kind to him. Get... Can I see them and, and talk to them? No, I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh, but, but Dr. Gillespie, let me talk to those other people. Well, I told you why I was able to do that, Kathy. Because they were from Australia. That's right. If they'd taken the baby, they'd have taken it far away to a different country where you couldn't have followed them trying to see the child. Oh, huh? But it isn't fair. You're asking me to give my child to people I've never seen. Oh, that won't make any difference. You won't be seeing the child again, either. He won't need you, Kathy. He'll be somebody else's baby when they take him out of here. Foster parents take a child because they want him, Kathy. Once he grabs a finger with that little fist, he'll Uh, make a home for himself. uh, He'll not only belong to them, they'll belong to him. All you have to do is to sign the adoption papers, Kathy. It'll all be over then, and you can go. Here you are. Right there. Just write your name on the dotted line... Have you got a pen, Jimmy? Yes, yes. Here, Kathy. A child should have two parents anyhow. Unless fate decides otherwise. A father to teach him to play ball. And how to sock a bully in the nose if he gets in a scrap after school. And his mother to feed him and wash him. And <laughs> take care of him when he has the measles and chicken pox <laughs> and the mumps. A mother's hands are wonderful things, oh, you know. Yes. A doctor can give medicine to a child with a fever, but it seems to work best when his mother's there to put a hand on his forehead or wet his lips. Well, just sign the papers, Kathy. It's a worry when a child gets ill, Kathy. Look at all the heartache you'll save. You'll never even know about it. Where's my baby? Where is he? Kathy, you can't see him again. You tell me where he is. I want him. Nobody's going to take him away from me. Nobody. He's just behind that door, Kathy, with a man who also wants him very much. I want my baby. My baby. I want my... Oh, Walter. Walter. Kathy. Oh, Kathy, honey. Jimmy. I think we'd better take a little walk. Yeah, I know just the place, Dr. G. Down in the basement where we can burn these adoption papers. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Jimmy, a very sad day isn't so bad when it has a happy ending. Mm. Kathy and Walter and the baby. (laughs) I think it's going to work out fine. But, well, well, Jimmy, look. Hmm? The world's greatest pair of foster parents. <laughs> Very funny, Dr. Gillespie. I bid you good evening. And don't you ever get me mixed up in one of your crazy schemes again. Why, I won't be able to. Did you hear the news, Jimmy? Daddy Carew and Mama Parker uh, are going to get married and move to Australia, where they can raise little kangaroos. For your information, if I ever want to get married, I can find a better man than I'd ever find around this hospital. 
Parker, you'd marry a rhinoceros if one proposed to you. You? You horrible man. <laughs> I have nothing further to say to you. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> Good night, Parker. Good night, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> Can't have dinner with me, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I, I I have a sort of a date with Diana. Oh, oh well, all right, run along then. Run along. You might walk over to the nurses' quarters with me. Parker may have cooled off by the time we get there, and I know how you hate to eat alone. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I do hate eating alone. And Parker recovers quickly. I don't know, Jimmy. We better walk real slow. <laughs> <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, Jack Crucian, Isabel Jewell, and Vic Perrin. Dick Joy speaking.